Hello, and welcome to Demiplane, and welcome back to the Claw Firm, Feather, Whisker, and Horn. I'm your Game Master, Mark Meir, and these are your player characters, the representatives of Feather, Whisker, and Horn. The emissaries, if you will. Let us meet them now, starting with Xander. Hello, I'm Xander Genere. Uh, you can find me on the internet at Xanderific with two R's and one F. And I am very proud to be an emissary uh, as Cornette the Silent Priest. Uh, Tengu that uh, uses he, him pronouns, presents as a blue jay, but uh, is has taken a vow of silence in praise of the god Saren Ray. Blue jay. Hi, everybody. I'm Blue Jay. You can find me on the internet. All of my links are probably on my Twitter at Blue Jay underscore 712. Um, and uh, I am playing Violette, the garish thief. Um, I and my character, are both she, her pronouns. And um, I am a Tengu that is Blue Jay flavored. Of course, how could I not? Um, <laughs> with a swashbuckler which I'm very excited for this episode because there might be some um, acts of daring do or the exact opposite. <laughs> some buckles will get swashed. <laughs> we can only hope. Uh, Jody. Hi, I'm Jody Hauser. You can find me on the internet on Twitter at Jody underscore Hauser and Instagram at the Jody Hauser. Uh, I am playing Hortense Pricklepaw, who is a magical cat, uh, not a jellical cat as far as I know, but uh, she is a cat folk, uh, Magus, and uh, she's not happy her friends are getting hurt right now. Uh, speaking of friends who are getting hurt, Erica. <laughs> Hi, I'm Erica for me. <laughs> you can find me across all social media at A Style Pixie. Today I am playing Calla Lily, your ribbon adorned tiefling summoner, basically a little Disney princess with horns, and I'm hurting really bad. Oh, and our pronouns are she, her. And Elisa. Hello. I'm Elisa Pearl. You can find me at Elisa Pearl on Instagram and Twitter and the real Elisa Pearl on TikTok. And I am playing Pegasi, who is a Konrasu alchemist. So it's a, a, a mystery wrapped in an enigma wrapped in a tree. <laughs> <It's determined. laughs> uh, oh, also, I'm she, her pronouns. Pegasi is she, they, they, she pronouns. And this is your cast of characters who find themselves in a fair bit of peril. We're picking up in the midst of combat at the top of the round. And the first round of combat did not go particularly well for our heroes. You all, as mentioned, are the representatives of the law firm Feather, Whisker, and Horn, sometimes referred to as the Claw Firm. You were to deliver an item to a gobbler by the name of Scudge, who is currently at your side in this battle, having just buried a rather ornate goblin weapon into the chest of one of his three brothers. The three brothers stand arrayed against you in a farmyard. We're currently frozen uh, in this frame of battle. As mentioned, Scudge has just attacked his brother Scorch, uh, the blood is flying in the air. We s currently see several of our heroes wreathed in flames, having just been on the receiving end of a burning hands spell. 
arrows are flying and there are some wounds that might need to be tended to as we begin our second round of combat with Calla Lily. All right. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to remember. So, so Calla Lily, you are currently I'm in combat in, with... in in melee combat. Yeah, with a goblin by the name of Snicked. Mm -hmm. uh, who has three blades uh, strapped to each of his hands and uh, claims to be the best he is at what they're what he does and apparently what he does is not pretty but he has just scored a hit on you and you are right next to him you have attacked him i believe unsuccessfully with a uh, claw attack yes um and who else is there any other creatures you know what i'll just i'm gonna do another well actually first i'm gonna do act together. I'm going to do two actions act together. Okay. And I'm going to gouging claw sh 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 snicked 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 <laughs> snicked <laughs> I didn't have uh, my in, open. <laughs> in reference to your earlier question uh, the other uh, brother is probably within reach of you. He is currently fighting Scudge. He is uh, Scorch, uh, did most of the talking, and is a spellcaster. He's right. the one that uh, fired some fire at all of you. I'm going to clock that in case I get some some distance on them. Um, but first, I'm just going to gouge and claw. I, I swipe at him, and my hands turn into big, spiky uh, claws with a 23 to hit. 23 certainly hits him. Yeah, okay. That is a... I'm gonna do uh, five points of slashing damage. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't, it's not a critical hit, right? Uh, what was your, what was your uh, result 23. again? 23. 23 is not a critical hit okay. in this case. And then um, I believe my my Eidolon Shimmer is is attacking some other goblins, correct? Yes, over by the trough. Uh, yes. They have just been sprayed by acid by the breath weapon. Um, I would like to, my Eidolon would like to tail attack, uh, whichever one's closer to it. Very well. There are two there, and they're both equally wounded. So, split the difference. We'll say it's this guy. Very well. Okay. And roll to hit. Shimmer's going to do a little a little spin around with a little tail whip, and that will be a 17 to hit. 17 does hit. Yes. Ooh. Oh, that's some good damage. If I roll high, I mean. Uh, six bludgeoning. Six bludgeoning, could you please describe how exactly Shimmer takes this goblin out of the fight and out out of existence? Uh, Shimmer uh, spins around in the air, her tail gaining momentum, smacks the goblin right at the neck, and the head just goes flying. And so it does. Uh, they're sitting by the trough, and this head plops into the slop as the other goblin screams. And, and we move on. Yeah. You've uh, used all your actions, yes? Yes. Very well. Cornette, it is your turn. Yes, and last time we had determined that because we have the same initiative, we could choose who chooses to go first, but mm -hmm. I believe that doesn't stick, right? Like, we can choose each round. I'm going to say especially because it was our uh, Blue Jay twins that uh, that rolled the same initiative. Yes, I'm going to yeah. let you swap <laughs> back and forth. So either uh, Violette or Cornette can go at this point. I think Cornette has been monitoring everybody and seeing just how hurt people have been getting. Uh, is Violet close to Calilily at all? Um, I was attacking Strong. Um, I don't yes. know. So uh, actually, you're all basically uh, they were they were grouped together, and uh, the three of you engaged them. So yes, they are they're up there. So you've got essentially Scudge, 
fi- this is there's going to be a lot of goblin names here. Sure, but sure. You've got Scudge fighting Scorch. Uh huh. You've got Violet fighting Stronk, who is uh-huh. a rather large and muscular goblin, and uh, then you've got Calla Lily fighting Snicked, the one with the claws. Amazing. So Cornette will stay in place, and as a three action spell, uh, spell will cast Heal. Uh, as he does this, he forms another circle of light uh, as if he was casting that other spell before. There's this ringing of like a crystal rim. Uh, as this circle of light forms, he blows forward the silenced breath that he uh, has given in honor of his god. And it moves forward like a mysterious shimmering bubble that then bursts in between the three of them. Uh, let's see. Get back. Eight! You get eight points back, baby! Each of us? Ah. Yep. Yay, nice. thank you! Very nice. And for that very timely and selfless act of healing, I think a hero point might be awarded. Yay! to uh, Cornette. Now, of course, all of you are going to be, as is typical, be beginning uh, this session, even though we began in the beginning of combat. I wouldn't deprive you of hero points in combat. All of you have one hero point at this point. You have two, Cornette. Yay. Also, making a note, it's hard not to abbreviate it as HP and then two. Like, no, no, no. (laughs) I have way more than that. (laughs) I literally just had that same thought process. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Of course. Uh, so, Cornet, that is all of you. That was three actions for that spell? Correct. And you that's left? the last time I can do it this round. This okay. <laughs> um, you, so... you, of course, felt this healing wave. Uh, you felt your wounds begin to heal. The burns, which you just received, uh, are already healing. Uh, the cooling, soothing magic washed over you. And now uh, you're in yeah, much better and, shape. And Violet feels this um healing and and glances back at her brother and just like i think partially because she wants to thank him and also partially because she wants to act like it wasn't a big deal she like gives him like a wink you know and then goes back to fighting um i would like to i'm not sure oh it's a free feat that i got but i need to perform so i think it's still an action um so I am a uh, battle battle dancer, I think is the is how it's how it's called. Um, so during like I, in order to get panache, can just do some some very stylish uh, weapon play as a performance. Um, and that will give me some panache. Where is it? It's here, battle dancer. Yes, a fascinating performance. Fantastic. I, and that is that's one action for the performance role, yes. Um, and I have to do a performance check versus the will DC of an observing foe. Um, Very well. So I shall perform. And what she's doing is just she has her rapier out. She has her very fancy um, cape. And she's intentionally kind of trying to very quickly like move the rapier around the body of um, Strong to just like almost hypnotic, like very quick movements so that he kind of just gets really thrown off. That's that's my goal is. So we will see. Very well. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> I got a one. <laughs> Plus mm. five is set. <laughs> but you got yeah. your hero point. Oh, wait, right? I'm going to use my hero point because I don't want to fail Wonder- this. Very well. Okay. Very well. I changed my mind. This die is no good. We're using a different one. You're probably going to get better than one. You will have to use the second roll, of course. Probably. We can't get worse than one. Okay, that is better than one. So I got a 12 plus 5 is 17, and it's versus a will. Very good. I've got his will here. You have successfully, uh, would you say, fascinated him? Would you say uh, impressed him? So um, it is a fascinating performance that I give, and then he is fascinated. Um, So I'm not uh, such as combat use to fascinate it, and the perform action gains the incapacitation trait. Um, Well, so he is currently incapacitated. Yes, he is incapacitated. Um, If you're an expert in performance, which I'm not yet, I can fascinate up to four observers. Wait, I am excited for that later. Um, Okay, so now that I have fascinated him and he is incapacitated, now I'm going to 
strike, and I have panache. So we're gonna attempt to we're gonna attempt to do a finisher very confidently. Mm -hmm. Um so He has that. been wounded already, so there's that. Well the finisher isn't doesn't necessarily have to finish them off. It's just the culmination of my show. I'm just saying if the, if I recall the last time you did this, if you if you do similar damage, you probably <laughs> will finish that's him. That's true, that's true. Let's see if I hit first. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a seventeen plus seven is a Certainly. lot. That um, is that is a hit, not a crit, but it is a hit. Okay, well I'm gonna do a lot of damage. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, it is a crit uh, because, of course, he is incapacitated. Uh, so yes, you oh, will be doing double damage. Yeah, you'll be doing double damage on this. Finish him. The <laughs> prophecy was true. <laughs> okay, this is uh, so much. Um, okay, let me just finish her. Make sure I'm not doing this incredibly wrong. Okay. Make a strike, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I think I'm correct. I have a lot of dice right now, and so I just want to make sure that I'm not making this up in some mm -hmm. way. Um, uh, confident finisher. Where is the... This is not helping me. There's so much to do. So much to learn. Okay. Of course. No worries. But thank you to okay. Pathfinder Nexus. Yes. That's definitely super helpful. Okay, so my usual damage on a rapier is 1d6, and I double that because I'm critting. Mm -hmm. And then my usual damage on a precise strike finisher is 2d6 added, so I'm do I'm rolling 66. Oh, God, yeah. So I yeah. wanted to make sure that I wasn't bullshit. I don't think you... Nope, I... You know, if, if this in some way circumvents the rules, I still want to see all this damage happen. <laughs> 20 points of, of uh, piercing damage. 20 piercing. Could you please describe how uh, Violette dispatches perhaps the most physically impressive of this uh, mini horde of goblins? So Violette during the first round was maybe like entering into the first truly fraught fray of her life. Um, I mean, she'd been in like bar fights and like alley brawls in her time but I think it's it's a lot different when like death is on the line um, so she got thrown for a loop and maybe like clocked in the jaw and was a little unsteady but then felt the warming presence of Cornette's magic at her back and was like you know what actually like I've done this before I'm good at this and she like flared her cape and did her magnificent, uh, fascinating performance, and then um, just uses her rapier to like hit several. Um, I don't know if she studied goblins, but she's fought enough humanoid people to know where the dangerous parts are. So she just like very quickly like stabs some holes in um, Strunk, and then there's a moment where like everything pauses, and then he just like heals over backwards. <laughs> Um, and starts bleeding onto the ground. And so she um, takes, I don't know if she would, yeah, she'd do, her cape is red for a reason. So she would take the end of her cape and like clean off her rapier and then like, um, <laughs> like points it towards the sky. And there's like a little bit of like light glinting off of it. And it's just like trying to make a confident like show like, yeah, look what I just did. I'm really great and awesome. And I actually still have one uh, action. So she's going to turn toward um, the next one in line, I guess. Because um, they were all like together. I guess it would probably be, is it the one Erica's fighting or the or, or Scorch? Uh, Scorch was in the middle and flanked by the other two. So Scorch is probably the closest one. Okay. So then she would turn towards Scorch and like... Um, weigh her her rapier at him and I'll I'll give him a, a good one too. I can't I don't have panache, but I can still do a hit a uh, second attack. Yes you can. You'll be at minus five on this because this is your second strike that, action that's of the turn. Okay. Um I only get twelve. Twelve? I'm afraid you miss. Yeah. So she's just it, it's it's more of a look what I'm gonna do to you next kind of attack. <laughs> Yeah, and certainly as soon as Strunk is perforated repeatedly by your rapier uh, and falls heavily to the ground, rather large for a goblin, uh, 
uh, Scorch, his brother, the caster, uh, does let out a howl. Like, no! Strong brother! And uh, Snicked, uh, who's in combat with Callalily currently, does also glance over and just clashes his claws together and looks to the sky and howls, Gene! Uh, and the, the other goblins sort of look at him inquisitively for a second. Uh, but you do also hear lots of shouts from the goblins that are up on the barn. Uh, they're like, ah, Strunk, no! Uh, you get the impression that Strunk was uh, perhaps the toughest among them, at least physically. And uh, yeah, so that, is, that does seem to have elicited the, re, uh, the requested ac uh, uh, emotions among the goblin. Hortense, it is now your turn. Uh, so Scor Scorch is still, like, standing and able to I mean, say stuff. So he's, like, not on his way out just yet, right? Uh, Scorch, you say? Yes. Uh, no, he does. He has been wounded. And, in fact, uh, he just took a hit from his brother who is wielding that sword. Or dog slicer, I should say. Uh, but uh, he does. He's. He's. Mm. <laughs> He looks like he's worse for wear. I will say that. Okay. Well, he he's the one that attacked her friends, and he's also the one that has made the most threats against the firm's clients. So uh, certainly, and he did like he hit three of you, I think, with a uh, big old burning hand spell. Yeah. So Hortense, who has gotten just really poofy and angry at this point, and she's still a little ways back because she hasn't advanced at all from mm -hmm. uh, when the fight started. But she uh, points her crossbow at Scorch, but also starts uh, murmuring some magical words under her breath. And light mm -hmm. gathers around uh, the crossbow, and she is going to use spell strike. And since I have a starlight span, I can use a ranged weapon. So she is going to be pairing gouging claw with uh, the arrows. Okay. So, uh, Assuming Pathfinder Nexus is correct, which I assume it is, um, I actually always, roll, always, I roll for the crossbow attack, which is thirteen plus five, so that's eighteen to hit. That does hit him. Yes. Uh, so I, and then it's the damage for uh, both. So for crossbow, it is a D eight. Uh, that's a three, and then uh. For the gouging claw, it is 1d6 plus 2, so that is 7. So it's 3 uh, damage from the arrow, and then uh, I guess it's all piercing damage. Uh, so uh, three, 3 from the arrow and 7? Yeah, so 10 piercing damage. 10 piercing damage total. Could you please describe how exactly Hortense dispatches the fearsome Scorch? Uh, so as the uh, bolt flies from the crossbow, it, this magic just expands around it, and it looks just like a cat claw, but with, like, almost daggers as claws, like, way too big for a normal cat. And so as uh, he's yelling, strong, uh, the, the bolt just, like, goes right through his throat, and the claws just go right into his face. So his uh, <laughs> scream for his brother is kind Bit of, of a Three Stooges moment of the... the... Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Through the eyes? Yeah. Okay. Uh, he he was sad to see his brother die, so now he gets to join him, and it's all good again. And so it is, as... Like one more action. Oh, of course. So, uh, what would you like to do I'm with going it? to uh, concentrate and recharge the spell strike. Uh, as you do this, the body of Scorch hits the ground, and Scudge, who'd been fighting with him, uh, horks up a large loogie and uh, spits it onto his brother's corpse. As we move on to the goblin's turn, having seen the biggest one of them and their de facto leader uh, fall, also a teeny dragon just took off one of their heads. <laughs> so definitely the, uh, the one by the uh, trough is going to flee. Uh, Snick seems to be sticking around, but you do see, uh, the ones that are on the barn, you see, like, those heads just sort of pop down, and you do hear, like, the running of bare feet on the, the roof of an old barn. And it looks like they are, t they are hightailing. Except for Snicked. Snicked 
begins foaming at the mouth and turns to you, Kalalili, and is going to make an attack. Uh, what is your armor class? It is 16 with mage armor. Uh, it's that mage armor. That mage armor saves you as these, uh, it just sort of like ricochets off. Uh, but he doesn't see, he is looking past you and is actually looking at Violette, uh, who just took his brother down. And he is still beside you, so he's going to go all out. Okay. So he rolled a 20. Mm -hmm. What is your armor class? What is your armor class, Violet? 18. 18. So he's going to 20 and he gets a plus. I I believe this is a crit hit. Is it? If he, he rolled a 20, I think it just it, moves it up to the next one anyway. Yeah. So it would yeah. Be so he's, yeah. he's got an at 20. And so this will be double damage. That's okay. I was very Sorry threatening and scary, you know. You just got you just got healed, and oh well, that's not so bad. <laughs> okay, so uh, he does a massive six points of damage to you. <laughs> I mean, it would have put me down if I hadn't got healed. So, yeah. mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry, and then it's both. Uh, so sorry, it should be eight points of damage. Okay. Uh, um, so yes, yeah. he does a tear into you, yeah. and you know what? I'm afraid he is just he's going all out berserker attack. Okay. Be a big... okay. And that is, a... yeah, that's not going to hit you. All right. So he has managed to tag you once, but his second, his uh, other attack on you has missed completely. As we move on, the rest of the goblins all seem to be running away. Pegasi, it is over to you. Okay. Snake is the only one who is still up and fighting. Okay. Um, does not look like he can be reasoned with, I'm guessing. Foaming at the mouth and all. Yeah, his eyes are bloodshot. He's foaming at the mouth and screaming. And There's he's... a lot of a lot of bubs. He just keeps screaming bub over again. <laughs> um, and he's near Violet now? Uh, yes, he is basically right next to both Kalalili and Violet. My only attack right now is the alchemist fire and I'm worried about splash damage. So, uh, I'm gonna, <laughs> can I try to tackle Snicked? You could, uh, you were, you were fairly, fairly far back, but you, how much, what is your move rate? Uh, 25, but I can take an elixir to bump it up to 30. Okay. Uh, I'd say you 30. can, yeah, the farmhouse is not that far away. It's not a, it's a goblin farm. Uh, I'd say with, with your move action, you can reach them. Okay, do I need to take that elixir? Actually, I will take it in case I want to run away right after and not get scratched <laughs> up. Um, right. So I'll take, uh, this is a cheetah's elixir. So you see um, Pegasi pull another little potion out and pop the top up and, uh, well, yeah. Oh, oh, pour it on their roots. That's how they take <laughs> elixirs. Uh, and so enzymatic compounds in this elixir strengthen and excite the muscles in my legs, but you know, my roots, uh, mm -hmm. I gain a status bonus to my speed for the listed duration. And then it says level one bonus. The bonus is plus five feet and the duration is one minute. Great. So, so. one action for your, uh, elixir. Mm -hmm. Yep. So t that's one action. And then for the next action, I'm going to just bum rush. So <laughs> moving and then strike, I guess is the third action. All right, try to try to hit him. Okay, what um, what do I add? Do I add anything to my roll for this? Is it like an athletics or strength? You're, are you making an unarmed attack or you're attempting to grapple? No, I think it's an unarmed attack. I'm trying to knock him down, basically. Okay, so make an unarmed attack then. Do you have that on your sheet? I don't see that as a, let's see, as an attack. Hmm. Your limbs might not be capable of, uh, oh. again, thinking of Conrasu biology. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm actually scrolling down on actions. Would it be there? So I see tumble through. I'm hoping. Strike. On their weapons, strike. It'll say if you're trained in unarmed. I. Oh, okay. And my weapons? 
It doesn't. Yeah, I don't have any. If you, if you want to essentially tie him up or like, you know, essentially you're trying to prevent him from hurting others, or you grapple. could try athletics if you want. Yeah, I'll do it yeah. as a grapple then. And yeah, because then that would be helpful, actually, to, sure. to prevent him from scratching people up. Uh, so athletics is plus one. That's uh, that's an 11. Totally. Uh, I'm a, he's far too wiggly and uh, yeah. is just like slashing all around. You're tr also doing your best not to just get stabbed by these uh, these blades he's got on his hands. Uh, so it makes it a little difficult. Mm -hmm. Also, he's... I imagine because Pegasi has like the aspen bark when they take the mm -hmm. potions, maybe like cheetah spots or something appear on the. <laughs> <laughs> like, ah, yes. Maybe yes. Say, <laughs> Tiny running shoes appear at the yeah. end of the room. Yeah. Like a million little running <laughs> shoes on the roof. <laughs> yeah. uh, but yes, you uh, you do have that ingested, so you do have the the boost to your movement still in effect. Okay. And ooh. okay, minus five for the second attack. Scudge uh, just lays into his brother, the, his one remaining standing brother with the dog slicer and hits both times and disembowels him huh? as he falls to the ground uh, and Scud Scudge also just uh, you know starts hacking the head off the body and then looks up at all of you and just says you gotta be careful with this one <laughs> Uh, and then, as you hear the fleeing sounds of the rest of the goblins, and Scudge looks around wildly. We did it. We won. And we exit combat. Whew. Yeah, as soon as uh, as soon as everyone is is done, um, Violet just uh, has some kind of like post battle. Um, I don't know if it's a series of flips, but maybe like an elaborate bow that she's practiced <laughs> um, well. for, for for the moment when she would win at everything, obviously. And so she will, using her new cape, um, uh, finish this elaborate bow and then sheathe her rapier and just be like, I always knew that we would win. Very nice. And actually for that very impressive kill of... Uh of uh, two of our bosses. I'm going to give hero points to both Hortense and to Violette. And Violette, if you would like to make a performance role to oh, yes, uh, every see time. how impressive this bow is. I'm sure very impressive. But I'm let's sure say extremely. How um, it is five, uh, eight impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day. I, you know, you uh, like, like... Nevertheless, <laughs> even with an eight, you get... You get what might be considered pity applause from Scudge as he sort of like puts the blade under his arm. He's like, all right, all right. Nicely done there. Taking out strong. <sighs> and nicely done all of you. Oh, I saw that maneuver. Is there some magic backing up that boat? He says to Hortense. Oh, um, yes, I, I, I know how to, uh, weave spells into, uh, some, some weapons attacks and also, um, punching, but I was a little far away to punch, so, um. Oh, I'll bet that comes in handy. <laughs> I know it does. Hey, Scorch, hey! As he walks over and starts just kicking the body. Ooh. Uh, I mean, that was your brother. Don't you think maybe show him a little respect? Respect? What respect did he show me going against our father's wishes? All of them. Nothing but puppets. Empty-headed puppets. Poison was poured in their ear by my uncle. Were, were the others uh, uh, cousins or other family? Mm, maybe. All I know for sure is these ones here, and he points to Strunk, to Scorch, and to Snick, they was definitely my brother's. I think Steve was with him too. Cool. He's so, a cousin. So, uh, did we just kill your entire family? Oh, no. I've got a very big family. But uh, these are the ones I hated most. Uh, uh, on, on this uh, except 
for the aforementioned uncle. Is your uncle someone we should be concerned about? I should think so. He said his lapdogs, but he won't be far behind. Mm. Look, you mentioned earlier that I might be able to uh, employ the services of your firm again on the retainer, as it were. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Well, good then. I think we've got some preparations to do, don't we? Is it going to be more of this? I think it might be. He won't mm. rest till he gets his hands on this as he lifts the dog slicer. Oh, May is this I a, a, a multi generational uh, inheritance issue? Hmm. My father left this blade to me. It's mine. But my uncle, he wasn't having any of it. And so, as I said, he used his honeyed words to turn these idiots against me. Not that they was ever for me to begin with. May I ask, what is the significance of this blade? Besides what you have already told us, is there a, a deeper um, power to this blade? Is there a reason why your entire family would begin turning and infighting over this one single piece of metal? My father was a great warrior. I think it's an honor to hold his blade, or even hang it above my mental. In any case, it's mine now, and I do with it what I likes. They can't have it. They can't have what's mine. Are you under the influence of this blade? Is it uh, persuading you psychologically in some way? I don't think so. I feel the same way about all my things. <laughs> I and turn to the others. People think. As for what else, I mean, it's a dog slicer, isn't it? It's for slicing dogs. Metaphorical dogs as well as literal. Mm. I turn to the others, not trying to hide what I'm saying to from Snape, from uh, Sludge, Sludge, Scudge. Scudge. Ah. Scudge. And I say... Sludge was another guy. Sludge was another guy. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> ran away. Another cousin. Uh, I say, do we think that this person is within their right mind or are they being influenced by uh, this blade? I have heard of blades that have a curse and take over the minds of their users. I'm right here. I know. I know you are right there. I'm talking to my companions. All right, don't mind me then. Don't I mean, I, I don't have any kind of family memorabilia, but if someone tried to take it from me, I think I'd be pretty upset about it. But if you want me to double check um, and Scudge, if you wouldn't mind me looking at the at the blade for a moment, I, I could try and figure out if, if it might be cursed or not. All right, all right. Just, uh, you know, be careful. Family heirloom and all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's good that he has acquiesced. That is a good sign. Uh, I will... All right, let's 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 do this inside, all right? I, I don't want to do it out here with this lot stinking up there at a joint. All right, come on, come on. As he gestures back to the farmhouse, some of you have been with him and uh, just sort of unceremoniously kicks open the door and slams the uh, blade down. He's not treating it particularly gingerly. <laughs> sort of slams it down on the table. It's like, I'll get some more of that beer. You like that beer, didn't you? Mm. <laughs> yes. It was, not, it was not terribly good beer. <laughs> very, very warm as well, yeah. Well, are you just going to leave your brother's corpses on the ground? Actually, we, uh, with Violet bringing this up, Cornette is actually going to stay outside of the farmhouse and tend to the bodies uh, and perform some rituals for Sarah and Ray. So even if they may not be respected by this family member, they're at least passing through what he believes is an afterlife. Yeah, no, Violet also would be like hesitant to just leave these people on the ground. I mean, there's a code amongst cool fighter people. <laughs> um that you how you can't you you gotta respect the people you down or else you know like what's the whole point um sure uh scudge makes up he's like ah they're not worth it we can clean them up later leave them for the crows you're fine fine i mean uh, so he doesn't seem to stop you he's he's like <laughs> yeah so i'll sail with coronet and i think part of it is also like if i was having a fight with my brother i wouldn't want to treat him this way so like not that she would ever have a fight like that with coronet but um yeah so um yeah she'll stay out and like i don't know start digging a grave or something mm -hmm. 
don't know what you mean. Wait, don't bury him there. <laughs> don't dig <laughs> up my yard. <laughs> Wait, I think maybe, maybe Kengu maybe Kengu do um it, yeah, more ceremonial uh like a like a pyre sort of thing, like to the sky, as it were. Yeah. Like maybe I mean, that's there's always yeah. there's always sky burial. Yeah. Which is just which is what Burning? he said. Just let let the birds eat them. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. no, I I don't know. Well, I'll ask Cornet. Cornet will know more about that. There's sure. a whole so ritual. you're you're so you're probably you know dragging the bodies off to the side. You know, like so. You yeah. Were, I don't know. Yeah. Copper Just, pieces on the eyes. The whole sure. Bit. Yeah. Just giving yeah. him a little more respect than his brother. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, he does warn you. He he says something specific about not putting the head and body of Snicked together. Make sure that they're in separate piles. <laughs> Understood. Uh, okay. And uh, meanwhile, in the house, as mentioned, he's sort of busying himself, uh, getting some more beer. If you and none of you wanted, those of you who had it before, it was like, yeah, it wasn't very good beer, very hoppy, and it was kind of, it was oddly viscous for beer. It was, uh, yeah, it was not a pleasant experience. Yeah. Uh, so he's pouring himself a couple of glasses. <laughs> meanwhile, the blade is sitting on the table. I'm gonna cast Read Aura on it. Mm -hmm. So that takes a minute, and. Um... I open my mind to perceive magical auras. Um, when the casting is complete, I know if the item is magical, and if it is, I learn the school of magic. Very well. So you cast this. Uh, this is the only other information that uh, Read Aura will uh, give you? Mm -hmm. It's a cantrip, so it just tells me if it's Very magical well. and what school. <laughs> there does not appear to be any sort of enchantment on this mm -hmm. blade, or it, anything transmutational magic. It's... Mm -hmm. Seems to be mundane, as far as you can determine. So, um, this is just an ordinary blade. Um, ordinary blade? Uh, ordinary it, blade? It's non-magical, is what I meant to say. Mm. Ah, right. so then this person is morally bereft. What, Understood. morally bereft? It would, you mean, if it was magic, it would be fine? But because well, it's not, it's ordinary, it's, uh, you know, mundane, then it, then it's not worth it. I'm simply looking for a reason that you would be so callous as to your siblings' deaths. Oh, that's very easy. I've always hated them. Yes, but I've even... I've always hated them. I have been around a lot of humanoid families, and even among the most contentious relationships, there was some remorse and sadness when the person passed away. Because also oh, there is no, the lack no, of... not uh, here ability to have some type of resolution to that relationship and ever have it on good terms and you seem to not even uh be having remorse for that possibility oh, well, maybe you don't understand but my brothers were not very nice people uh, i would say terrible people i would say the world's better off without them in it understood yeah, you know, not just Jeff for me not just for me i mean for everyone it's true. They did uh, attack us, too, and we were just kind of, you know, here. They did threaten to kill us. And, and oh. just because, you know, just because they're related by blood doesn't mean that you have to like them. Very true. Uh, my father, my father, <sighs> he showed them affection, for sure. He couldn't see, see their faults, but I couldn't. And... More than that, I can see the faults of his brother, my uncle. Would you what like your... to... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, what is your uncle's name? His name is Scum, and he lives up to it. That's S-K-W-Triple-M. <laughs> one more time? And not, not W, like two U's, one U after the other. So uh... S-K, a U, and then a U, and then three M's. Okay. Do you want to um, file a lawsuit against your uncle for the damages and the emotional distress of having to uh, murder your brothers? Well, you could do that. Um, I mean, th I think that would be, if you wanted to hire the firm to handle it, I think that would be the legal uh, approach, the best legal approach. And I think uh -oh. you have a self-defense case on your hands because oh, they right. came to you. I was, I was in my home. I was in my home. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. 
I like it. Uh, and uh, what? How many bits of them will they cut off for doing that? Um, that's I what the law the, does, right? I'm not a lawyer, so I can't um say for for sure. Right. I mean, he may just have to pay a fine, but I don't know. It, it would go to you. I think you would get um remuneration goods or yeah yeah it sounds nice uh, of course uh, i i can't really hear uh, sue him or whatever it was he called it if uh in fact uh, he kills me before i get a chance so uh, my more immediate need he's uh not so much for the services of uh, your employers but your services tonight like protection? Protection. Either you take me to the city or we make a stand here. He'll be coming for it. He's not going to take this lying down. Hmm. Which do we prefer? Um, should we talk to Violette and Coronet about this? Yeah, I think this is a, a decision we should all, you know, make together. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, all right, all right. Any beer? <laughs> I think I think we're only allowed to have one drink while we're on the, on the clock. I'm driving, oh, so <laughs> um, very professional. Very I'm professional. Have to pass, yeah. Conscientious. It's all right. I've got a soft drink for your designated driver. Uh, and he for pulls ones. forth a jar of some kind of sludge that he pours into a wooden cup. Here you are. I'll give it to. I take it. I'll, I'll go give it to the horses. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, Hortense just takes and he goes outside. Uh, do the rest of you uh, also move outside to uh, to confer with your colleagues? Mm -hmm. Very well. So uh, the uh, the three uh, sorry the three of you come out of the farmhouse. You find that Violette and Cornette have indeed sort of moved. The, I guess there are four bodies. Uh, mm. There is the two of them are headless. <laughs> right. And, yeah. You've, did you retrieve the head from the uh, slop uh, trough? Yes. Okay. So it's oh. it's a very it's a very gooey oh. goblin head. I mean, I would have. take off my fun, fancy cape first, mm -hmm. but then I would definitely retrieve the head. <laughs> okay. Uh, so also, yes, you. I will say, in sort of like a magpie fashion, even uh, Cornette can't help it, but we are going to loot the bodies, or at least of check course them. you're going to loot the bodies. <laughs> I mean, how could uh, you not? Yeah. Uh, yes, you do find a collection of coins amongst uh, these various goblins. Uh, from the three, or I guess the four bodies total, you get uh, 18 silver pieces, uh, 36 copper pieces, and Scorch was actually carrying a small pouch of five pieces of gold. Ooh. Uh, Scorch also had a potion on him. Ooh. Is in a clear green bottle. Okay. I don't know what that is. Hmm. I'll be happy to hold on to this. <laughs> <laughs> At least in this one respect, we're very similar, like things. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, Scorch also had a sort of. Uh, it looks like he was trying to emulate like a signet ring, but it was it's it's <laughs> not a very good manufacture. Uh, but it it does have a big sort of stylized S on it. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna do detect magic just to see if anything in the area has magic. Uh, the, whatever is in that bottle is definitely magic. Okay. Uh, and I think Cornet is going to take the signet ring, uh, just in case, uh, because. We have been maybe employed. Uh, there was mention of other family, so this may come in handy. Mm -hmm. Oh, Hortense is also going to put the mug of slop, uh, set it down by the horses if they, they partake. They inch away from it. <laughs> That's a good sign like, not to drink it. it. <laughs> Backing up the carriage. <laughs> uh, so yes, all five of you are currently outside. The uh, perforated body of Stronk. Uh, lies with coins over its eyes. Uh, likewise, uh, the body of uh, Scorch 
uh, the decapitated body of... Uh, actually, yeah, did you bother putting coins in the eyes of the severed heads? There, It's different. Uh, the actual torso has the two coins, uh, and it's a cantrip. On, on his nipples? Or? Yep, absolutely. Okay, <laughs> on the nipples. Sure. Uh, and Cornette has been sort of casting light on them as well in response to the Saren Ray, so they're glowing. <laughs> <laughs> On the yeah, eyes, it uh, looks kind of cool, but on the nipples, it's a burlesque show. <laughs> it's a bit, yeah, a bit pasties. Uh, so yeah. this is this is the site that greets the three of you as you exit. Uh, <laughs> of course, you do your your detect magic. You you see that they've retrieved a potion of some kind. Seems yeah, and I magical. think that uh, Viola is like attempting to like have the the head like be like on its neck, like, and it keeps falling over, and she's just like. No. <laughs> so, question: Did you put Snick's head back on his body? No, Not back on we his warned. body. It's neck. <laughs> on the ground okay i'm trying to like set it set it upright so it's not like rolling away mm -hmm. uh but you've have you grouped the head and the body together <laughs> i mean like in the same region yeah I and mean, i don't okay. want it to be too far away okay love that uh and you're all together but you're you're free to talk amongst yourselves uh do you think that we should talk to the uh law firm about i mean staying the night that wasn't really i mean i've never i mean not alone anyway stayed outside of the city like who knows what could happen like i would be uh, totally fine um, i will say this they would kind of assumed that you'd stay somewhere you'd make camp somewhere because mm -hmm. there is in the amongst the things that were given to you were a tent and sleeping bags oh, okay, and okay. provisions oh also because curfews were uh ended for mm -hmm. this yes because of this not that i ever listened to curfews right. anyway true but just you know like we uh, I, uh, this guy seems to not really have a lot of respect for for life and well-being um so do are we all wanting to stay i mean well, I, I think we have a responsibility to our client and i mean he clearly didn't respect the family who came to kill him but i don't think he's shown us in particular any i think he's been pretty honest and forthcoming with us he has been very you know generous with his beer uh, <laughs> that that offer has been rebuffed but yes uh i think cornette will bring in a piece of parchment from the uh carriage and sort of set it on the dining room table and start to sketch out a rough outline of this farmhouse or wherever they're staying on the inside uh, and we'll start to circle sort of uh, weak points, like any uh, points of entry, windows, mm -hmm. doors, that sort of thing, is making sort uh, of a blueprint. Yeah, you notice that uh, when you uh, go back into the house, Scudge is already, does seem to be sort of barricading things. He's like closing wooden shutters and dropping heavy bars over them. There are two doors in the house. Uh, both are thick, uh, stout oak doors, uh, a front door and a back door. Uh, the back door is one of those kinds that actually, you know, you can open the top and the bottom half, but they both have deadbolts on them, uh, which uh, Scudge has been putting in. You also see that he is, uh, he's pulled out a crossbow uh, out of somewhere, and he's uh, also digging up some crossbow bolts. There doesn't seem to be much other in the way of weapons around, but uh, besides his dog slicer. <clears throat> and he, you do see he had a collection of knives as well, but they're... They're sort of for him. You are all armed, though, so uh, so there's no need to scrounge weapons. I mean, is the house big enough that it would make sense for us to all try to stay inside overnight, or would we need? Would it be better for camping outside? Uh, you should be able to stay in the house. Uh, as mentioned, it's uh, it was a human farmhouse that mm -hmm. uh, he purchased, so it's not. It wasn't built purpose built for goblins. Mm -hmm. He actually has like a number of sort of you know wooden staircase to things and little steps to, to help him reach counters and things like that. Uh, once he's done drawing this diagram and sort of mapping out the place, he'll turn towards Violette and uh, there's a common signal or a gesture that he does in, I need to rest. Mm. Um, yeah. And she'll, she'll look around like towards the house and then like towards the carriage. And it's just like, um, are we all wanting to stay inside or maybe we should s stay with our, our things? Um, thoughts? 
I mean, we, we should... could probably bring any valuables that we're worried about inside the house with us. We uh, should. Aside from the, the carriage itself, which is probably the most expensive thing that you have with you. <laughs> we like can a... also set up watch, mm -hmm. take turns being on watch. And is there a stable we could stable our horses for the night? I mean, there uh, yeah, there's there's a barn. Mm -hmm. I merely uh, think that you all trust this gentleman we've never met before too swiftly. Well, I mean, I don't think we trust him so much as um, you know, the he's the firm's client and they trust us to take care of, you know, the stuff that they started. So um, I and, think it's more that we trust our, our mentors. And I do feel a little safer being inside of the building than being um, outside in the open. And there's, and there's what, five of us and one of him? I mean, we just killed, like, his family, so I think if he <laughs> was a problem, like, I don't think he'd last very long, and he probably knows that, so. But That's he hasn't threatened us or anything true. either. And we'll we'll definitely keep watch. Okay, I'll protect all of you then. Uh, so, as uh, you may recall, the battle was basically taking place at sundown. Sounds, uh, so yeah. it, it is dark now; it is night, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Scudge uh, is lighting lanterns uh, around the farm. Uh, he also uh, lights a torch, which is out by the gate. Mm -hmm. like, uh, they know we're here, but we might as well see them coming. Mm -hmm. That's smart. Uh, Cornette has taken up in a corner of the house and is sort of e emitting a soft light as he has taken a meditative stance and is calmly uh, trying to get the benefits of a long rest as quickly as possible. <laughs> now, uh, what's uh, game mechanics wise, how long yes. do you need to spend? That's a good question. Uh, I am not sure. So there's the uh, da, 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 anything to re uh, get spells back. And I think, I think it would be, oh, is it normally eight hours? I is think... meditative, oh, it, oh, sorry, I thought, is meditative stance a special thing that you nope. have that lets you, oh, okay. So you're nope, just, that's you're just, just trying to get a long thing. rest. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, sorry. Yeah, I think that was finish. just like thematic. Yeah, the yes, flavor. Yes, just thematic. Yes. Uh, the flavor is, yeah, so it's probably, you're you're not sure you're going to be able to get your spells back. We're going to see. Uh, if something happens tonight, we'll see. Yeah. We will see. Uh, the rest of you, does anybody take up a position outside at the carriage? Are you all in the house? I think that um, Violet uh, is like looking around and she's maybe a little bit more like street smart than all the rest of these people and feels kind of like protective, except for Pegasi. Who knows what Pegasi knows? Um, <laughs> but she's going to uh, take a. Um, I'm going to take a uh, health potion. Do we have one of those around? Yes, and I think yes you do. Yeah, and she's going to just, like, stay on the lookout. Like, she doesn't, like, we know that someone's maybe going to be coming in the night. Like, she does not want to be caught unawares. And she's had sleepless nights before. Like, she's not too worried about it. Very so, well. Um, uh, so health potion? You have uh, some minor uh, healing potions. So these will restore 1d8. Eight. Mm -hmm. uh, and this was part of the little first aid kit that you were granted by uh, the partners. We uh, have four, and you're taking one? I'm taking one, yes. Okay. And hoping that I roll high. <laughs> I got a six. Yeah, nice, fine. nice. Six, six, six point back, back to you. Uh -huh. uh, does anyone, Did you guys make any attempt to identify uh, uh -huh. what you found uh, on Scorch, or do you have that capability? I can give it to Callily. I can read its aura. It's magic. <laughs> and what school is magic? Uh, this would be, I believe, uh, necromantic. Ooh. Oh. Whoa. Um, would I be able to do an additional Arcana check to see if I, if if anything sounds familiar? <laughs> <laughs> uh sure give me your arcana oh that is a nat 20 so that is a Ooh. 24 Ooh, yes uh you suspect that this might 
actually offer some sort of protection against uh, the undead. Mm. I think I've read about this before. Um, it should, you know, protect you from the, the, the undead. Are there going to be undead? I maybe, you know, uh Scorch was just nervous about undead. But maybe, uh it's not bad to have around. Maybe we should move that head and body further apart. Uh, is that something to be concerned about? Uh uh Scudge seemed to think so. Yes, oh. Scudge did say the oh, head and um, body should of snicked could oh. not should not be put together. And that um to be careful while he uh, of that one. Okay. Yeah. Um she'll just like gently I don't know, move it a bit farther away. Full croquet mallet line up the <laughs> shot. <laughs> we could just swap the heads. Because we have two heads and two bodies and we could just swap the heads. <laughs> I mean is that allowed? Oh, sure. I mean, I don't think they're going to complain about it. <laughs> Y'all seem to be real cavalier about these corpses. <laughs> I'm just nervous about them coming back. Yeah. Yeah, where did you end up putting the corpses, by the way? You had them at one side of the farmyard. Is that where they stay? Did they get moved to the barn? Where are they? I mean, I just think like out of the way, I guess. Yeah. Still out um, in that woods area, but yeah. away from the house. Very like, well. I don't know if I would know any better where to put them because it's not my courtyard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Scudge keep, just keeps saying, leave them for the birds, leave them right. for the birds. Essentially that, but away from the house. <laughs> uh, Hortense would also like to move the horses and carriage into the barn just so they're not, you know, out in the open. Out mm -hmm. in the open, great. And uh, now you mentioned wanting to post a watch. Uh, mm -hmm. Where is, just uh, give me, again, the rundown of everybody's position and who is on watch when. Well, Pegasi can only heal, it looks like, uh, Pegasi has sunlight healing, so mm -hmm. enter a meditative healing state as a 10-minute activity when exposed to direct sunlight. It is night. Oh. Yeah, exactly. So Pagasi, you know, Pagasi took like five damage, but Pagasi's kind of tanky, so they're fine. Uh, so Pagasi could be on watch all night and then heal in the morning. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, I have. Yes, do, uh, oh, do, four, Kanrasu, do Kanrasu actually sleep, per se? I don't think so. A question they just have for that the ages. meditative, meditative yeah. healing. Yes. Yeah, just in, meditative in a, sunlight. In sunlight. Healing. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So Very I well. could... Uh, yeah, I think I could be one person on watch all night if you, other people want to like cycle in and out. Very well. Where do you wish to post yourself? I think mm. Pegasi would do a little bit of a circuit, but um, throughout the night kind of be posted up for like 30 minutes in the front and then rotate 30 minutes, maybe the four sides, four corners of the house. Mm -hmm. uh, the property is, of course, so you've got the farmhouse, the property is fenced, uh, there oh, is good. a rather large uh, uh, hog pen uh, there with, with some uh, very unusually large hogs uh, <laughs> and their trough and, and everything like that. And then you have the barn so and the privy. These are the main structures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, okay, so I think Pagasi will walk the perimeter of, inside the fence. And then if someone else wants to keep watch just at the house or whatever, you you know. Yeah. Um, Violette was intending to kind of like stick around her brother um, and like keep watch. But yeah, just not necessarily trusting that this person that we just met today that's so cavalier <laughs> about their relations. Like Violette, <laughs> family is a big deal. Um, so she's not trusting that they are just going to like do whatever. So she's going to stick around Cornet and like maybe the group. And keep watch there um, and try not to fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> She's tired. Very well. She's tired. Uh, She's and tired. we know what Cornette's doing, try, trying to meditate. Uh, what about uh, Kella Lily and Hortense? Hortense would probably 
she doesn't specifically need sleep to refresh at anything, but I think she would need a sort of timeout because she never killed anyone before. And <laughs> yes, she just needs yes. A, little, a little break. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah. You did. You did take a light. He certainly was trying to murder all of you, uh, mm-hmm. and nearly succeeded. Uh, but you did actually end that, uh, by all accounts, terrible person's life. His his mm. his brother assures you it's just like you did good. You did good. <laughs> it just curls up and she's like, legally it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, nice and legal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like how he said that. Yeah. <laughs> but Callie will just try to sleep. She's just, you know, she's got her her dragon. She mm-hmm. encourages her dragon to just cuddle up on her chest, and she'll just try to sleep. Like, okay. How long? How long does your idolon stick around? By the way. Excellent question. Time to look that up. <laughs> <laughs> just a weighted blanket, but a dragon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a teeny uh... acid spewing dragon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it has let me let me check the uh let me check the book but uh we're assuming yes that uh they that she sticks around until dismissed or otherwise mm-hmm, cause it says if it's already manifested i can un i can dismiss it essentially mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah but, but you want uh, you you wish to keep her around as opposed to sending her to whatever extra dimensional space she occupies <laughs> But yeah, she's, she's, the, she's very comforting to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> very nice. And so, uh, everyone else is sleeping, uh, except so for uh, Violette and Pegasi, yes? Mm-hmm. All right. It is deep in the night when Pegasi, on your patrol of the farm out by the fence, you hear a voice actually calling to you from the darkness. Hey, are you, uh, are you a person? Um, can I, without turning, can I see where this voice is coming from? Uh, it's somewhere in the darkness. You don't have okay. dark vision, do you? Oh, dang it. I almost took an elixir formula for that. I don't think I have it though. No, it is certain. It's beyond. As mentioned, uh, torches were lit at the gate of the farm where you are right now, but it is coming from beyond the radius of the light. Okay. Um, I stop moving if I was moving, mm-hmm. and I say, "What is personhood? Is it <laughs> a consciousness through the darkness? If I am part of the cosmos and I break off as one shard, do I become a person then?" I don't know about any of that. Be honest, I wasn't planning on having any kind of philosophical discussion at the moment. Is your name Scum? Ah, uh, no. No. I'm Steve. Are you, <laughs> are you Steve, lying? I'm, I'm here as a representative of Mr. Scum. Ah. Parlay. Yeah, that's what this is. We've been watching you for a while now. We've here to make you a very generous offer, you and your friends. If we wanted to, we could have attacked at any time. We could have swarmed you while you were out here alone. But we didn't, did we? That's an that's a just for a good faith, is that well, that's what that is, right? I suppose. Right. So, are you uh empowered to speak for your group? No one has given me that authority. I am only one individual consciousness as a part of this group of individuals. Ah, well, Mr. Scum says you're going to need a quorum for this. So, uh, you're going to need to bring a few more of you out here. I will not leave my post. Mark, can you just yell for them or something? I mean, if you were being attacked, you would have... I assume you have a signal or something. You could bring the others out of here. Do you not work out a signal? It's a blank stare on the orb's face. Ah, we should have bloody attacked them! We should have attacked them! I didn't even have a signal! 
All right, look. We we do wish to parlay. All right. I will call for my companions. Okay, but you can you, you're gonna have to leave your post to do that. You're gonna you should have worked out a signal. Uh, Pegasi's going to make a weird noise. <laughs> I don't know. Like what a kind of weird. What kind of, like a please, please demonstrate. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, uh, what was that noise? <laughs> <laughs> so there is a weird noise. I assume you're doing it as loudly as you can, like yep. at the top at the top of your lungs, even though you don't have lungs. Mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> let's see. So Violet, you did say that you were up and trying your yes. best not to fall asleep, and you I were was trying my best. You were dozing because it was boring, and you were sort of falling, and then you hear this sound. Uh. She just jumps forward. Oh, wait, no, we need to hear the sound again. Hear <laughs> oh, oh, right, right. This sound. You hear yeah. this sound. <laughs> and then she the jumps here. forward and um, probably like moves as though to put her hand on Coronet and then is like, wait a second. I should check what that is first. <laughs> and so she goes to the door. And looks towards where she knows that um, Pegasi was stationed. And I do have um, dark vision, uh, low Ooh. light vision, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, so I will um, move towards where Pegasi is and does like the noise get louder? I'm assuming that like I can tell that it's coming from her. Uh, yes, yeah. It's uh, what are you do? Is there any accompanying physical motion to this noise? Yes, uh, <laughs> like, her branches wait. are definitely like flailing. Her her leaves are shaking, and she's kind of vibrating too. It's kind yeah. of a vibrational sound. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So there's the you know the blah 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 blah, but there's also like the sound of shaking leaves and yeah. So I'm going to sneak. I'm going to try and be stealthy and quick well. and get to um get to the region where Pegasi is, because this is a noise that I've never heard before, but I'm assuming is meant to be some sort of alarm. Um, so I'm going to sneak over and try and, like, if someone is attacking, get the one up on them. Very well. Please uh, make that stealth roll. Just looking up every everybody. Ooh, he's got a high perception. Mm -hmm. Oh, dear. I totally envisioned the wacky inflatable tube person. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's, that oh, would, I, I yeah. rolled a 17 and I have a plus seven on stealth. So nice. that's you, rolled a seven, you rolled a, sorry, what? 24. Then? 24 total. Yeah. Right? All right. You're pretty sure you're being sneaky. You I'm are a shadow. Sneaky. You are the knight. I'm a pretty sneaky lady. I, are you wearing your garish cape? Um, I think the garish cape, I took it off when I sneaked before. So I think that she, she would have like tucked it in for the night, um, given it a nice little pat, you know, <laughs> tiny kiss, tiny kiss to the cape. Yeah. You pull out your auxiliary black hooded cape. And... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The one I already had before. That's not as cool looking. Mm -hmm. But quite good for surreptitiously sneaking, especially mm -hmm. given that you have got a result of 24 so yes you are moving what is the range of your low light vision uh so i got it i think from tangu let me check the nexus and see if it has like a range on it um because uh, of says, course yes let's see you can see in dim light as though it were bright light and you ignore the concealed condition due to dim light um is what low light vision is right so, so you can basically see a little further into the darkness yes but uh, it's not dark vision it's just better mm -hmm. like night like low yeah. light vision and actually at the edge of your perception mm -hmm. you can actually make out uh the goblin that is speaking to pegasi but I don't see like the glint of light on steel or like a drawn weapon or like the, the dark color of whatever. I don't know what Picasso's blood would look like, but I don't see that. Right. <laughs> you do not. You do not see that. And you can actually, I mean, you can see Picasso. Picasso is standing in the light mm -hmm. uh, and by the torch, by the front gate uh, and out of the radius of the light of the torch. But within what you can see okay. uh, is this goblin 
Uh, he is just standing there. He does have a weapon drawn, but he's just sort of holding it to, to his side. He's sort of using the other hand to to shout uh, uh, the conversation that he's having with Pegasi. Okay, so I would like that to... That is what you see. I would like to attempt to, like, get behind him and put my dagger at his throat. Very well. Okay, so I'm going to let you sneak out. And as you leave the uh, light of the torch, uh, you can see him a little more clearly. It's kind of hard mm -hmm. to see looking out of a lit area with your with your low light vision but yeah you can see him there and you are quite stealthy mm -hmm. i'm wondering if there was like a an action for putting your uh, knife at someone's throat is there uh i'm going to say it's the putting the knife at the throat action so, okay yeah cool, you, can, cool, 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 you cool. can easily you sneak up Interact. to him he doesn't he does not seem to know that you're there and you've got a blade by his throat he he would know that you'd be able to score a pretty easy hit on him because he's just like he's flat footed essentially. Okay. So you put the you're gonna put the knife by his throat and you're gonna say anything. Yeah, I, I put are the you knife... putting the are you being so stealthy that he doesn't even know he has a knife at his throat? <laughs> no, or... no, no. Okay. I put I put the knife at his throat and then I say um what's a cool thing to say? Violet would have already prepared this, but Blue Jay needs to think about it. Um, I would say one wrong move, sir, and you'll find yourself on the ground. Uh, uh, what is this? Oh, I've come to parlay. Oh, I'm just a messenger. I'm just a messenger. And I look to Pagasi. Has, has she stopped making her strange motion? Uh, uh so, Pug and now, did you say this loud enough for I, Pugassi? I said it, I said it loud enough. It wasn't like a whisper, because I, I, I don't want, I want Pagasi to know that, that, that they've got backup. Yeah, so Pagasi, you're you're aware uh, as you and you also hear him be like what what no no I, I'm a messenger like you you hear the goblin say all of this. Mm -hmm. uh, you didn't wake up anyone else before you left the house, did no, you? No, I didn't because nope. I I know from my brother that you have gotta let the spellcasters get rest. <laughs> What's everybody's perception? <laughs> oh no, <laughs> mine's plus four. Kala Lily huh. is a four. Uh, Cornet's a six. All right, uh, everybody. Yeah, give roll roll me a d twenty and add your perception. Uh, okay, twenty four. Twenty four. You did. You you do do hear that sound. In fact, I think what you did hear. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think uh, Violet left the room far too stealthily for you. To, or no, sure. Did you get it? You did you get a twenty four? And you were a twenty four stealth, right? I was a 24 self, yes. Oh, yes. yeah. Uh, so you actually heard, perhaps no one else would be familiar with this noise, but you're like, that's the sound of my sister sneaking out. Uh, <laughs> oh, every night actually... for the past forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Kalil... what were... oh, sorry, oh, Kalil... I was just going to ask. I rolled a 16. <laughs> Thank you. <very> <laughs> and Hortense got a, a nine. She is a sleepy kitty. In yeah, sneaky. Hortense. Hortense does not wake up. Uh, Calla Lily, however, you wake up to the sound of. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't do it as well. Uh, Lisa, no, please do it again. The universal sign. <laughs> yeah, it's much more like that. It's much yeah. more yeah. like that. Mm -hmm, definitely. It's like a sinking engine. <laughs> yeah. Like a, a window I could look out of. Yes. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, it's a one-story farmhouse, and you're basically you were sort of probably all like bedding down in the main room or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'll look out the window, and I have dark vision as well. Uh, you have dark vision or low light? Dark vision. Oh. Okay. Yeah, you can probably see to. Well, again, the it's it's only within a certain range though, yeah. so you basically see Pegasi uh, waving and undulating at the gate. Then I'll wake up. I'll wake up Hortense. It was and... it was self defense. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, and uh, meanwhile, you also see as you're sort of going to wake up Cornet, you see Scudge sort of come out of pulling aside the curtain in front of his bedroom, and he's like pulling on a pair of pants and doing up like the one suspender that holds his pants up. He's like, "What? What's going on?" Meanwhile, outside. Um, you, yeah, you've so got just, this goblin. 
Yeah. So does Pegasi like stop with the alarm when I um, call out? Okay. So yep. then like basically being like, okay, so whatever fracas that Pegasi was alerting <laughs> us to uh, is, is over with me. Like uh, she will um, just like push him a little bit forward, like more into the light and then um, like uh, not drop the knife, but just like, you know, step a little bit back to give him a little room and says, speak your piece. Uh, when you put the knife to his throat, he did drop that weapon that he was holding in his hand and mm -hmm. he, he had his hands up like this. Mm -hmm. And you say, speak your piece. Like, well, that's what I was trying to do, wasn't I? <laughs> well? Right. I'm, I'm here to parlay. Well, there's two of you at least. All right. All right. Is that a quorum? I'm not sure. I'm not exactly sure what percentage of a group constitutes a quorum. Is it over 50%? I feel well, like at that. In we which case, we do not. We have not reached the threshold as yet. <laughs> we sleepily pull up behind them, just like wiping <laughs> like our faces. Oh, okay. Well, I think it's everyone. Is that, what do you want? Oh, oh, all right. All right. Just oh, calm no. down, Scott. Just calm down. Oh, she got you where you stand. You see, he's got the dog slicer with him. Mm -hmm. he's like, oh, look, I've come to offer terms. Polly, as I said, I'm here on behalf of scum. Don't you speak that name in front of me. I'm here on behalf of your uncle. Don't you speak that familial relationship in front of me. <laughs> look, it's going to be very difficult if I can't. All right. The party in question wishes a certain object. Well, he's not getting it! Do any of you interject in, uh, like, they're basically going back and forth. I want to this. I'm having a fight. I want to let them, you know, work this out. Yeah. Uh, Steve, who apparently is the goblin that you captured, uh, just says, Look, look, you got to let me get in a word in edgewise. Can you help me out here? Aren't you lawyers or something? Solicitors? Uh, we were we were actually uh, uh, speaking with our client here about uh, the lawsuit he would like to prepare against um, said party. Lawsuit. Oh, well, yes, right. you sent. Uh, I mean, there was damage to the farm. There was emotional distress. There was uh, like work stoppage, probably. And it's just it was a big financial burden to you know have to fight for for his life. Oh, I don't think Mr. Scum is going to take very nicely to the threat of legal action. Well, that's what happens when you attack a bunch of people who work for a law firm. <laughs> well, well, I suppose so, but uh, don't you think that would make him more likely to attack and wipe you all out so that he can, A, get what he wants, and B, not have to suffer any legal ramifications? Well, I mean, we're only we're not the entire firm. We're only a, a small representative. Uh, party of, from the firm. Right, right. Well, um, I believe that Mr. Scum had other terms in mind, if you don't mind me voicing them. There's a what? gesture for, like, go on, and also silencing Scudge. Be like, it's I... better. And she's like, all right, all right. Fine, fine. I'll let the lawyers do the talking. The, the paralegals or whatever you are. <laughs> yeah. uh, so... Parrot. Legal. Mm, parrot legal. Parrot legal. Parrot legal. <laughs> uh, yeah. Perfect. So, uh, Steve just says, um, the terms that, that uh, uh, I guess my client, uh, as he sort of straightens up, uh, is that, oh, yeah, my client, uh, Mr. Scum, um, the terms he was prepared to offer were uh, you leave and then uh, we take what we want and uh, you're alive. And he's dead, and we got the sword. How's that sound? Legally, Not great. I right. Don't well, that's... this is just a starting position, mind you. This is his starting position. <laughs> um, perhaps we can meet uh, halfway, middle ground, as it were. Uh, um, it's... like you leave, and everyone lives, and. Scudge gets to keep his legally um, inherited weapon. No. Well, now, see, that's our two opening positions are the exact opposite of one another. Mm -hmm. So I think a little bit of compromise is called for, don't you think? Uh, Steve, were you here earlier? Ah, uh, yeah, that was me by the privy. 
Uh, would, wouldn't you say that um, the party you were representing is sort of negotiating from a weaker point? Well, uh, he did make short work of his nephews, so I'll grant you that. But, um, well, Mr. Scum, he's, uh, he's of a slightly higher caliber than uh, his young relatives. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And there's only uh, one of him, correct? Oh, well, there's one of him, but there's lots of us. Uh, mm. well, what are we, his uh, underlings, he calls them. But, I mean, so, how many underlings are we talking? And the ones uh, who ran away. Well, <laughs> I'm not at liberty to divulge that information, but suffice it to say, more than you. Mm -hmm. But but we are, just to clarify, they are the same ones that ran away earlier? Uh, well, me, yes. Uh, not not uh, Scab, uh, you killed him. Um, and of course, mm -hmm. not uh, not Scorch or Slick or Strong. Mm -hmm. But the, the underlings are the same ones who ran in fright. From us. Oh, yeah, a few of us, a few of us. But well, that oh, wasn't yeah. all of us. That wasn't all of us. Okay. I'm just taking note. That mental I will note. say that we were quite scared of you, but we're more scared of Mr. Scum. Hmm. What if we could offer you protection from Mr. Scum? Oh. Well, I didn't thought of that. What kind of protection are we talking? The well, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no. The same type of protection that we offered uh, Scudge, I assume. Well, There's like well, a come... shuffle and a little piece of paper uh, coming out of uh, Cornette's robes, and it just says, Underling Union. Because... Yeah, so... Yes, give me... Who's... Who, who is taking the lead on this? I'm, uh, and I can I can let people assist as well. But essentially, I'm going to make this a diplomacy roll. This intimidation. Diplomacy <laughs> roll. I can do. I I can. I'm I'm pretty diplomatic. Great. Very and I well. am holding a like a knife near around to this gentleman's throat. Like I'm not really in the discussion, so I, I don't think diplomacy is is what I'm using. I mean, but I we, am. Well, I you know I might like you might be able to do two different things. Like you're essentially trying to make an intimidate role to uh -huh. help the. Like it's good. It's the classic good cop bad cop. One uh -huh. is using intimidation. One is using diplomacy. So. If you or or anyone else, like Hortense or anyone, as wants to be bad cop, uh, I would give you a DC twenty uh, intimidate that you would have to meet or beat. Uh, and if you succeed, then you would give a bonus to the diplomacy roll. And of course, right. if you critically succeed, you would give more of a bonus. I could try for intimidation because I feel like she's sort of already been talking that direction. Mm -hmm. okay. Sure. I mean, and if you want, like you mentioned, you've got a knife to the throat. You can go. I'm going to let you do bad cop, bad cop, good cop. So, mm -hmm. Two intimidate rules. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll let, I, you know, again, this is not necessarily rules as written, but I like this. So um, <laughs> I'll essentially so we're both rolling you, intimidate to aid? Yeah, so each of you will try to make an intimidate roll to aid. I'll, I'll say at the outset that if one of you failed and one of you succeeded, it would just cancel each other out. And okay. uh, Callow Lily would not have a bonus or a penalty. But uh, we'll see. I mean, you might both critically fail. Who knows? Let's see how it goes. <laughs> Don't put that evil on me. <laughs> might both critically succeed. Uh, is mine also a DC 20? I only got uh, a no, nine. this is just for the assist. This is for oh, the okay. Assist. Steve, I'll just put it this way. Uh, the goblin who is our client who we're working with is alive and unharmed. And all of the other goblins who, you know, came against him and tried to harm our client are either... Um, dead and some some like decapitated so like super dead or they ran away so i mean i think that our services kind of speak for themselves in terms of results uh, right right uh, yeah yeah at the mention of the dead goblins you see like a little <laughs> bead of sweat appear uh, uh, uh so a 17 though so 17 so you did not make it but that's just a normal failure okay yeah. And I got and a nine, so mm -hmm. it was also mm -hmm. a failure. And I... you're just like, sort of like, you notice that he's, because he's engaged in conversation now, he's kind of forgotten the knife is there. So he's <laughs> like, he's just talking normally. He's like looking away. He might look back and realize it, but he's and, not doing and, that Yeah, now. and maybe she like, not really being very well versed and like, maybe he's just like, slowly pulls the knife away. Like, I don't want to accidentally hurt this guy. <laughs> I want it to be on purpose. <laughs> 
Um, I do. Mm. Yeah. Uh, do keep in mind there are hero points still available mm -hmm. if anybody mm -hmm. wants to. Use I'll them. save them for a more important <laughs> moment. I did gotcha. roll a nineteen on diplomacy. Uh, you rolled a nineteen total. Total. Okay, so uh, he looks intrigued by this and actually says, "All right, so you're going to protect me from scum, is that it?" Well, any of the underlings who would like mm -hmm. to, you know, come and don't you want right, to be right. but, but, but the and thing is, you, you're going to leave eventually. Well, here's the thing. Can um, I come live with you? <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to ask our um, um, guardians about that. But, but the offer's on the table. It's not a no. What if we remove the threat of this Mr. Scum? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I mean, that would be probably probably a good good way to protect me from him, wouldn't it? There, there are five of us, right? And and there are, if if we form that goblin union that um, Cornette, uh, so uh, so smartly suggested, um, that is a, a lot more than one scum. All right. All right. Well, I, I can't speak for the others, but uh, if you're willing to entertain the notion of me coming back to the city and live with you, <laughs> that's where you came from, right? And I'll just get to live... I'll just get to be a recurring character, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Steve! <laughs> all right, all right. I you behind that, yeah, all right. Uh, and so, uh, do you have make any other sort of offer? Is like, I mean, would there be any sort of uh financial compensation uh, involved in this package? Could yeah, I cre create, I yeah, I'll do a role with my lore scribing to actually make this like union document for like better pay <laughs> and rest and like wages. Okay. <laughs> I mean, does, okay. does some pay you at all? Oh, oh well, yeah, we get the, you know, we, it's it's more loot in the bodies kind of thing. Um, not technically a salaried. Uh, I'm I'm more of a contractor, I suppose. Um, yeah. That means you yeah. don't have union protections. No, no elf gear. <laughs> Twenty three for this document. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, you could basically do what you what you do have a knife in his throat, uh, even if right. you kind of didn't realize it for a second. So if you want to take this inside and basically sit him down and you drop this document and he he does sign. He signs uh, signs on the dotted line. Uh, th written into this document, he does sort of insist that uh, uh, he basically, th the terms he wants is that you will let him, you'll provide him with housing in Absalom uh, and board and lodging, essentially. Uh, and if you're unable to provide it at... Uh, the firm's uh, facilities that you'll pay essentially he'll get a per diem to stay at an inn <laughs> okay oh my god uh, is so there yeah a, that's there a, I, I feel like there should be a clause in there that we will also try to find employment for mm -hmm. him either at the firm or elsewhere so he is he will be you know but earning, also you know, opportunities steve. for steve could be running this whole operation we have a union mm -hmm. leader mm -hmm. that, yeah. mm -hmm. Oh, should uh, we make some templates for him? Definitely. So you start doing the rough draft of the, of the <laughs> pamphlets, uh, and uh, so this is this has taken a while. Is anybody doing anything? As <laughs> has everyone just come in to look at this contract session, or is everybody else? Uh, are you taking up posts? What's going on? Um, Violette will be kind of like looking around to see if there is because last time she saw three goblins, there were significantly more goblins than three mm -hmm. goblins. So she just kind of wants to see if there's anyone else like approaching or like hiding in the shadows mm. or doing anything unsavory, you know. Very well. Uh, so let me just make some. Uh, was Pagasi still outside too? I assume, yes. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we got Pagasi and Violet outside. The other three are inside. Well, it clearly wasn't Steve this time because he's inside. But yeah, there's oh. <laughs> you do hear the snap of a twig as 
clearly uh, someone is trying to be surreptitious and has not succeeded. Um, yeah, Violette will like just toss her dagger through the air and be like, no use hiding. Uh, and... Yeah, rather noisily, a couple of goblins sort of peer out under the uh, from the underbrush. And you do see at the back of them mm -hmm. a rather large goblin. Okay. And I say, I assume you heard the discussion being had? Say, discussion? I haven't heard nothing about no discussion, my dear. All I know is a messenger that I was sent to parlay was taken captive. So that's a no on the discussion. I, he, he consented to going inside, okay? There was no captive taking. Ah, she's lying. We saw him put a knife to his throat. And then, ah. then, then, then a whole bunch of them came out and they took him into the house. Your wow. brother was there too. I mean, that all is true, yes. But eventually it was consensual. What? Eventually it was consensual? <laughs> that is not a sentence anyone should ever rutter. Uh, uh, well, I, I'm not really good at the talking part. Uh, I'm great at Clearly the talking not. part. Clearly not! Oh, so, I assume my terms were rejected then. Those terms were leave and let us kill, uh, Scudge? Yeah, that was my opening position, that's right. Yeah, that was rejected, yes. I didn't say I didn't have wiggle room. Well, uh, what were the other terms let us kill you too? I, I don't think I would have ever agreed to those terms, no. Okay. Um, those are pretty much the only terms that I understand. What was the counter offer? What was the counter offer? Uh, All I know is like these, two, these two said they were observing Steve. He came up, he was parlaying with uh, that uh, tree, is that a tree or something? And they were chalking, and then you came out, you put a knife to his throat, and then they all came out, and then you all took him into the house. Yeah, yep, yeah, that's actually what happened. Mm -hmm. well, well, that's where I'm at, so I don't know what anything about any counter offers or nothing. What was your counter offer? Like she probably like like I don't know if the the paper is like crumpled on the ground or like it's like she still has. You no, know, I'm I'm gonna say with that roll that uh, Cornette actually made you know, he created it in triplicate. So yeah, pamphlets. <laughs> yeah, <Yes. laughs> pamphlets were like swiftly, and she and she was like, oh, uh, it, it was it was a union. Oh, and she like, like scrunches her, like, her <laughs> like scrunches her little feathered forehead. Hey, hey, wait, wait. So your counter offer to me was a union. <laughs> I w it wasn't me. I'm not really much on the bureauc bureaucratic part of things. To be fair, it wasn't a counteroffer to you so much as the rest of the goblins. What? Who's this one? As uh, Kalalili, I assume, has come out. Or because yeah. Kalalili always there. I think, uh, well, so we went inside. You, yeah, basically, there are folks inside. There's like lots of contract discussions going on right now. But I can say Callow, you know, Brett was just like, eh, this is boring, and kind of wandered outside. And then, oh, another goblin. I'd follow <laughs> Violet. Yeah. yeah, you saw Violet over there. And so, yes, you, you say that as you walk out, and you're like, well, all right, you know what's going on. I, uh, in terms of the contract or the... No, 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 no the, the contract, the contract. The, the union. I gave you an ultimatum. Did, did you? I don't think you set any timeline, sir. I, was, I, I mean, it was inferred it's by dawn. It's always by dawn, <sighs> isn't it? Well, you should have said it was by dawn. Farmhouse surrounded at night. You get an ultimatum. Of course it's going to be by dawn. I hate mm. working for lawyers. Can I also do a perception check with my dark vision to see if I see any other goblins aside from the ones that came out. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Actually, at this point, because it's it's just turned into conversation, you notice like a bunch of goblin heads are starting to sort of poke up here and there. <laughs> uh, some of them are just sort of like, you know, they're, they're holding bows, but they've got them at their side. They're just kind of like wandering out into, mm -hmm. into the open. Violet is very. Like, right, get back where you were. Get back where you were. Well, oh, it was an eighteen. <laughs> yeah, there's there's at least a dozen goblins besides him. 
Mm. And there may be more who are actually following orders and staying hidden. Mm-hmm. And and Kalalili will say this kind of louder, uh, so the other goblins hear. Like, I know that, um, you know, you pose a very intimidating uh, uh, figure above the other goblins that have come with you. But um, if, if, you know, I know this isn't exactly what you wanted, Mr. Scum, but um, with a goblin union, uh, we could offer some sort of uh, protection. Goblin union? <laughs> goblin union, she says. Yeah. Uh, if you want to extol the virtues of said union, like mm. all these other goblins are in earshot, he, of course, you know, doesn't receive any... You know, this doesn't benefit him in the slightest, but I'd no. say you can make a diplomacy role for the other goblins within a year shot. <laughs> I'm going to use a hero point because that was yes. a nine. Okay. Um. <laughs> you give an impassioned union speech. <laughs> Rise up. <laughs> okay, that was uh, that was better. That's a 21. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, okay. You know, because there there is one of you, and we did make some swift work of your uh, nephews, and we do have an obligation to protect Mister Scudge here, and um, you know, uh, maybe. Oh, those three, are, those three are dead, are they? They're dead. Uh, yes, and well, plenty of more where that came from. My brother was nothing if not prolific. She'll point to the the uh, the corpses. Yeah, you got them sort of piled over there. Mm-hmm. And um, well, you see, if um, if your main, I guess, uh, hand is that you're scary and and large, um, there is a power in numbers. As she sort of like looks around to all the other goblins. Okay, so he, of course, his scowl just deepens and deepens mm-hmm. as you go on. But you do see a number of the other goblins just sort of like looking at each other and looking back. And then you hear a voice from the back. Tell us more about this union. (laughs) Uh, So she will continue to talk about how there's power in numbers and how, you know, with with a group, you can have a democracy. You can make your own decisions. You Uh can do what's best for you know, the masses as opposed to the one person who's tr- who seems to be a, um, a tyrannical sort sort of, you know, with threats of, of violence and everything. And Where, when you say how- threats, of, you know, tyrannical, everyone's like, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. like the, the agreement verbal. And then when you say threats of violence, there's like, oh, ah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. it seems <laughs> to get a little louder. They're doing they're doing the Muppet thing where you know the Muppet crowd thing where they just open their mouths slightly uh-huh, and kind of uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah kind of like just look at look back and forth to each other. Mm-hmm. I feel like Pegasi's making that noise anyway, just in a great way. <laughs> <laughs> like, is that a warning or anything? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh and yeah, you see several of them begin walking, just sort of like walking out, uh, just right into the open and they're sort of walking up to you. They, they have a number of questions mm-hmm. about benefits and that sort of thing. Meanwhile, <laughs> uh, Scum is unceremoniously dumped by the two that are holding the sort of like cha- rattan chair that he, you know, the, <laughs> the thing that he's <laughs> on as he falls <laughs> onto the ground. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, and his helmet is sort of like over his eyes right now. So he's sort of like clawing <laughs> at it. Brilliant. Trying to get it out. Like, what? Fuck me up. What? <laughs> Uh, the rest of you, I think at this point in the house, you certainly have heard, uh, you have heard this goings on. You can join them if you like. Uh, Steve, uh, see, happily is signing the contract. Uh, Scudge, again, like he grabs his sword and starts heading out there when he hears his uncle's voice. Mm -hmm. Uh, what is everyone else doing? Uh, yeah, I'll head out, but I'll, I'll say to Cornet, I think we need more contracts. (laughs) <laughs> and with that he'll be like on it and start making more and like holding the ones up that were assigned to dry so that all of the ink is official <laughs> yeah so you're just you're, you're like you're basically you know putting a fanzine together in the kitchen you've got like yeah all this, yeah, yeah just like, <laughs> all the stuff that you're, you're turning it into a production line uh as, as I'm, out, I'm gonna if i when i see the crowd I'm gonna, Oh, are you all here to sign the contracts to join the union? Oh my yes, yes, I am. I am. Yes, yes. The line starts right here. Uh, 
Fila and... was just very confused and kind of a little sad that there's not more violence happening. <laughs> <laughs> and like once it calms down enough that she realizes there probably won't be violence happening, she might like go sit in a corner and like start like, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, there might be violence happening. Yeah. Because okay, well, Scudge if there is, I will is, totally wake up for it. He is striding alongside Hortense, uh, and he has his eyes fixed on his uncle, mm -hmm. uh, and just sort of points at it, like, you! Yeah! And starts jogging towards him. Uh, wait, is, anyone wait. Going to, is anyone going to intervene? Oh, yes. Uh, Pagasi, at this point, will extend a branch to stop Scudge. He's like, all right, I'm just going to cut him up a little bit. You know, into little pieces. Not yet. We are in the middle of negotiations. Uh, negotiate? Wow. As he watches this file, this long line of <laughs> goblins uh, filing into the house. Uh, I assume Hort is Hortense taking them to the house or is she just directing them there? Uh, I think I'll stay by the house, but in like, in, like if thing, it, still in like crossbow range if things get bad. But um, okay. yeah, I'm directing like, oh, uh, line up here, single file. Um, yeah, we should have, uh, you know, we're, we're getting the contracts out as quickly as we can. Um, yes. I do have a quick question. Um, mm -hmm. How long were we asleep for? Oh, yeah. Did we get any spells back? Oh, you did not get a full no. night's sleep. No, you got a couple of hours. It was like sundown. Okay. This is probably around midnight. So, like, eh, maybe four hours later. Okay. Yeah. And, th and I think we've established this is in the summertime. So, yeah. Mm hmm, mm -hmm. Pagasi will, uh, in addition to keeping that branch over in front of Scudge to keep him from moving forward, uh, Pagasi will now use their other branch to, to mount the the bomb launcher and load up the alchemist fire and just have it ready, <laughs> pointed at Uncle Scum. <laughs> and so, yeah, he, uh, Scudge, you know, he does he he doesn't attempt to push past you because he's like, he's like all right, all right, I'm your client. Uh, then he notices you load up the bomb, and he's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> go on, go on. Uh, he seems quite entertained at the thought of his uncle burning to death. <laughs> it's like, oh, that'll be better. Yeah, much better. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, uh, Scum is sort of like scrambling to his feet and moving his helmet. Uh, and he's screaming at the uh, departing backs of the other goblins. But he has not drawn his weapon yet. He seems quite flummoxed. Uh, does anyone make an attempt to restrain him or say anything to him? Or are you leaving him to his own devices? Well, I mean, with Pagasi kind of loading up the bomb launcher, it is very clear where it's pointed. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Pagasi will say, now, you seem to be allowing this to happen, which is to your benefit, because if you don't, you will get a face full of alchemist's fire. Mm. And you know, if... Oh, you think I'm without my resources, do you? I'm a bloody war chanter. That's mm. nice for you. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, if, if you choose to continue to, um, you know, stand up against us, you may also find yourself with a little bit of... Um, acid reflux and the and <laughs> shimmer will just sort of like float above looking at him menacingly if we're doing intimidation i would like to aid i'm just saying mm, i'm okay. horrible at intimidation but uh, let's do it uh, <laughs> let's, try it. let's try it why not you know and i'll say shimmer can even do like a little without expending her breath weapon do like a little spit of acid onto the ground like <laughs> Uh, so, nice. yeah, so first of all, uh, I would like you to make an intimidate roll, please, Calorly. Oh, I'm doing intimidation? Uh, well, you're, you're go if you're going to aid, you'll need to make a DC 20, and if you make it, then there'll be a bonus. It's a 17. Oh. Oh, okay, all right. But, That's good, right? Uh, well, oh, let me make 20. the DC 20 oh. to, for yeah. the aid action. But mm -hmm. do you want to try that to intimidate? Yeah, yeah. Very well. Okay, come on. Big money, big money. <laughs> no whammies. No, no. Whammies. That's a nine <laughs> on the die. <laughs> Minus Yummy. one. It's an eight. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Ah. He does not seem intimidated. He does seem angry. However, he is real. I'm, I'm realizing that a lot of his spells 
are great if you're leading a bunch of people, like <laughs> uh, <laughs> higher courage, and uh, you know, he's got a couple of things he could use, but like he's alone now, so he. I will he say, he does in, pull his blade though. As he realizes how alone he is, there is a sort of like a raucous laughter coming from the house as Cornette has started to hand out beers along with signed contracts. <laughs> oh, and these, these goblins seem to love this beer. They think it's great. It's, it's very exactly, much like after yeah. church coffee and donuts, but with beer. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And all, ah, you're the, this chant. Uh, and meanwhile, the war chanter is, uh, yeah, he doesn't quite know what to do. At which point, Scudge, who is standing by your side, Pegasi, just goes, You're too late, Uncle. I know what you came for. And he holds up the sword and reaches up to the pommel and unscrews it. And pulls for, and as he pulls it forth, the little bit of the end of the pommel comes forth. You can see it's a key. He's like, this is what you were after, isn't it? Well, I'm afraid it's too late. I know all about it. And unless you think you can take all of these fine heroes and me, and who knows, maybe your own men, I'd hightail it. And the war chanter, let's see... He is actually quite intimidating when he says this. <laughs> and Scum just says, this isn't over. Oh, but it is, Uncle. I think you'll find it is. And once I use this key, well, I don't think my financial situation is going to prevent me from hiring as many mercenaries as it takes. Maybe the ones you've trained yourself. These here goblins. But I'm going to allow unionization under my watch. <laughs> Fine. There'll be a reckoning, boy. One day. There... Yeah, 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 yeah. Tell it to the judge. That's a legal thing, right? Right? Yeah, yeah. I don't think this applies because he's not actually undergoing criminal charge. All right, it's fine. Uh, as you hear muttering, and uh, even those of you with dark vision can't see that far before scum slips away into the dark and scudge turns back to all of you well i have to say i am impressed that you to end that without bloodshed mind you kind of a negative as far as i'm concerned <laughs> still i think it's a fate worse than death a war chanter with no one to follow him. <laughs> oh, the irony! Tell me, what do I owe you for this further service? Oh, uh, I have not discussed rate with my colleagues. Um, g g give us a moment. <laughs> so she'll, she'll go gather everyone. <laughs> do we know what that key is for? Hmm. Mm. Maybe we should just ask for a percentage mm. of what we helped him recover then. That's that's how billing usually works, right? Very, oh, yeah. very law lawyerly. Uh, Cornette will take another piece of parchment and write like 10%, fold it in half, and slide the number over, <laughs> like tapping it. <laughs> uh, so oh, are you doing this to Scudge? Scudge, yeah. Okay. He's like... He's like mm. He sort of crosses it out. He slides back a 1%. <laughs> Five. Five. We'll do it a 5% slide it in. 1.5%. Good. <laughs> we saved your life. Oh, I know, but this is a rather substantial windfall in my inheritance to boot. Also, I've already paid your firm for the initial recovery of this. What I'm actually paying for is your help tonight. Mm, we are How aware. Two percent. Two percent. And he right, he does agree to two percent. Very well, two percent. And the following morning, uh, Scudge takes you and a fairly large troop of goblins. <laughs> Therefore, a family at this point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
uh, to a, a nearby a sort of, it's essentially a cave, a rock outcropping. Uh, in the back, there is a steel plate that does have a keyhole in it, which this fits into. When he clicks it, uh, uh, the, the entire thing sort of pivots, and he walks into a room filled with chests. Uh, there are quite a few of them. And he actually just goes over to one and gives it to you and then looks at another one, grabs it, and gives it to you. And he, If you were to count, there would be a hundred chests in this room. Whoa. Oh. All and right. he gives you two of them. Okay. Two <laughs> percent. Got it. <laughs> <That's fair. laughs> uh, he thanks you kindly. And, of course, you know, the other goblins sort of cheer and celebrate. Uh, uh-huh. And... He uh, it makes it clear that he's going to sell that farm of his and use uh, the money that he has to buy something a little more upscale. Uh, he does have a fair bit of money because each of those chests holds 250 gold pieces. Whoa! Wow. Wow. This is a m- lot more money than you have seen in your admittedly very short adventuring career thus far. Uh, and he load, you know, he has the goblins load these chests into your carriage. You are basically free to leave in the morning. Uh, however, you do note that Steve is already sitting up front in the, uh, <laughs> oh boy. because, because oh, of course yeah. you had a separate contract with him. That's uh, he's got smart. a little, he's got a little bindle stick with a little oh. handkerchief tied up on the end. He seems uh-huh. to be ready to go to Absol. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe the firm needs an, an intern. Intern. I like the sound of that. That sounds like a highly paid position. <laughs> Poor Steve. <laughs> and, and so as the carriage pulls away from Scudge's farm and heads back towards Absalom, the city at the center of the world, uh, are there any parting words? Uh, any? There's time, of course. We can see some of you up front uh, driving the carriage. But it might be the same people as, as we're on the way out. Uh, but are there any parting words? I think inside the the uh, carriage, Coronet has taken up the same position on sitting on the two boxes of treasure, much like a bird sitting on a nest, <laughs> in the same way that we were bringing the package back. Or oh, our nest egg. Yeah, it's, it's true! <laughs> uh, Violette is telling the story of her great success um and each like she's told it now like two or three times and each time the goblin is bigger she was like completely alone even though everyone was there like she's just <laughs> continuously exaggerating her own feats and, and uh, also yes. has like griped to basically everyone about there not have been having been a second fight because she totally would have like been awesome if it were the case and like talks about what she would have done if they had had a second fight and it's just yeah going on and on about it uh and of course you are telling this uh as you're driving the carriage um the person you're telling it to is steve and he's like yeah i was there you know (laughs) i I don't remember that bit uh as as we move uh into the or actually callow you're probably driving again so anything from you oh you know she knows violette and so she's I think she might be starting to piece some of the uh the realization that maybe mm. not all of Violette's stories are as uh, cut and dry as, as Violette has told them. What? Mm-hmm. Yes, because like Steve, you were also there, so you're okay. Yeah. <laughs> I re- re- I that remark is uncalled for. <laughs> How <laughs> dare <laughs> I resemble and... that remark. <laughs> you do. And Hortense and Pegasi, you're both inside. Pegasi, you're probably like sticking your the top of you out uh, on occasion. But uh, wh- how are you ending this time uh, on your adventure? Uh, Hortense, before she gets in the carriage, would go workers' rights to the, <laughs> the gathering, yeah. to the yeah. union, and then get in the carriage. Yeah. Uh, Pagasi will probably spend this time on the ride home, first of all, 10 minutes to sunlight meditate. Oh, yeah, in the sunroof. Um, being, mm-hmm. Yeah, being the sunroof. So they're going to do that. And then, uh, mm, yeah, I think they'll also spend time, since it's a new day, redoing uh, 
her mutagens and elixirs and bombs because she has to redo them fresh every day. Mm -hmm. uh, so you all, yeah, whoever's in the carriage will see many branches now just like all doing, basically she pulls out a lap, lab, lab, an alchemist yeah. <laughs> lab on her lap and she has like many branches and roots kind of holding multiple things together and mixing and, and chemi chemistry labbing it up in the cabin character. every nice. bump on the road there's like a tension of like will it explode no yeah fine. <laughs> everyone's freaked out except <laughs> except pagasi yeah <laughs> like doo, 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 doo. Oof. yeah Oof. Oh. and that's the sound that we hear as we pull away and we see <laughs> the carriage moving down the road I, on the way back to apple so i'm just uh, the occasional whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, <laughs> and sighs of relief uh and we hear uh steve saying like that no, no, I was that that was me. I was the guy that you held the knife to. As we depart and leave these characters until we see them next time on the Clawfer, Feather, Whisker, and Horn. I've been your game master, Mark Mir. Thank you very much. See you next time.